Welcome to this free CCNA Packet Tracer Practice Lab. You can download the lab file from the link in the description. If you like these labs, please consider supporting me via my Patreon or the cryptocurrency options in the description. In this lab, we will take another look at port security. Although we will certainly revisit it again, this lab will be the final one in this introductory series. In the previous lab, we configured sticky MAC address learning. However, this time, we will manually configure the MAC addresses of PC1 and PC2 as secure MAC addresses on Switch1 and Switch2, respectively. Step 1 is to ping from PC1 to PC2 to generate traffic. Let's go on PC1. Ping 192.168.1.12. There we go. Step two is to view the MAC address table of switch one. Switch one should have dynamically learned the MAC address of PC1 on F02 and the MAC addresses of switch two and PC2 on F01. Let's check on switch one. Enable, show MAC address table. As expected, there are two MAC addresses on F01 and one MAC address on F02. We don't know which of the two addresses on F01 is switch 2 and which is PC2, but that doesn't matter in this lab. We just want to know the MAC address of PC1, which is this. Step 3 is to enable port security on Switch 1's F02 interface and manually configure PC1's MAC address as a secure MAC address. First, let me copy the MAC address of PC1. There we go. Now let's configure the F02 interface. Conf T, interface F02. Remember, we have to configure it as an access port first. So, switch port mode access. Switch port port security. Okay, we've done that before. Now, to manually configure a secure MAC address, we use this command. Switch port port security MAC address, followed by the MAC address we want to configure, which I will paste right here. There we go. Next, we must repeat the process on switch 2 for PC2. Now, the MAC address of PC2 should already be in the MAC address table of switch 2. The default aging time of a MAC address in the MAC address table is 5 minutes, meaning if nothing is heard from that address on the interface for 5 minutes, it is cleared from the table. Each time a packet from that address is received, the timer resets to 5 minutes. However, let's ping from PC2 to PC1 just in case. Ping 192.168.1.11. There we go. Now on to switch 2. Enable show MAC address table. Again, there are two addresses on the F01 interface, those of switch 1 and PC1, and one on the F02 interface, that of PC2, which is the one we're interested in now. So I'll copy that. Okay, now let's configure the interface. Conf T, interface F02. Switch port mode access. Switch port port security. Switch port port security MAC address. And now I'll paste in PC2's MAC address. There we go. Now let's do a quick ping from PC1 to PC2 to test, which is step five. If we configure the correct addresses, there should be no problems. Ping 192.168.1.12. It works. Now on step six, we're going to try to trigger a port security violation. Let's remove the cables first, which we can do with this tool in Packet Tracer. There we go. Now, I'll connect PC1 to switch 2 by clicking on the cable down here. There we go. And now I'll connect PC2 to switch 1. There we go. 
Step 7 is to ping from PC1 to PC2. What do you expect will be the result of this ping? We manually configure the MAC address of PC1 as a secure MAC address on Switch1's F02 interface, and manually configure the MAC address of PC2 as a secure MAC address on Switch2's F02 interface. Remember, the default number of secure MAC addresses on the port security enabled interface is 1. So, if we attempt to ping from PC1 to PC2 now, a port security violation should be triggered when the packet with a different MAC address is received on the port security enabled interface. What exactly will happen? If you remember from a previous lab, the default action in the event of a port security violation is shut down, meaning that the switch port will enter an error disabled state, effectively shutting it down. Let's try that ping on PC1. Ping 192.168.1.12. As you can see, the ping fails. Also, if you check the port lights on Packet Tracer, you'll notice that the port light on the F02 interface of switch 2 has gone red. This means it is shut down. However, why hasn't the F02 interface of switch 1 been shut down? This is because the packet was stopped right at the F02 interface of switch 2, so it never reached PC2, and thus PC2 never sent a reply to the ping, which would have triggered a port security violation on switch 1. Step 8 is to reconnect the cables. So I'll remove these cables first. There we go. Now let's connect them as they were originally. PC1 to switch 1. There we go. And now PC2 to switch 2. There we go. Now let's ping from PC1 to PC2. Do you expect the ping to work? PC1 is once again connected to Switch 1's F02 interface, and its MAC address is configured on the interface as a secure address, so it should be fine. Likewise for PC2, it is now connected again to Switch 2's F02 interface, and its MAC address is configured as a secure address on Switch 2's F02 interface. Let's try that ping on PC1. Ping 192.168.1.12. It doesn't work. Why is that, even though we connected the cables back the way they are supposed to be? Well, Switch 2's F02 interface is still down. It doesn't automatically recover and become enabled again. It can be configured to automatically recover from a port security error, but that will be a topic for another lab. For now, let's do it manually. I'll go on switch 2. And first, let's check the status of the interface. Show interface F02. As you can see here, the interface is down, and it's in an error disabled state. How do we manually fix this? It's simple. Shutdown, no shutdown. This will reset the interface, and it will no longer be in an error disabled state. That's how you manually recover an error disabled interface with the command shutdown followed by no shutdown. Finally, let's do one last ping from PC1 to PC2, just to make sure that everything is working right again after we did that little experiment with port security violations. I'll go on PC1 one more time. Ping 192.168.1.12. It works. That's all for this lab. Thank you for watching. I hope this lab and video have been helpful for you. Please subscribe for future labs like this, which will be released weekly. If you have requests for any specific labs, let me know in the comment section. If you want to support my channel, please consider contributing to my Patreon, patreon.com slash Jeremy's IT Lab. I accept Bitcoin and Ethereum donations via the addresses in the description. 
I am also a brave verified publisher and accept BAT or basic attention token donations in the Brave browser.